the I can mention Neumann's work in particular. And then, since the algebraic object associated to its empty curve, and also we have this uh, ACOA L, L function, which is defined by the Euler product taking over almost all primes. These are the primes of deduction, but I uh, don't want to go into what, what are the primes or bad primes. So I'll just think it like this. And uh, from the definition, it is like convergence for real part of S bigger than 3 by 2. But because of Wiles work on similar Daniel conjecture, such an L function can be associated with a modular form of task form. And uh, so we get an analytic continuation. And of course, BSD conjecture says something about uh, the value f as per to what And uh, so, in particular, we are interested in this congruent number empty curve. Why? Because if we start with a triangle, then if we have a rational right triangle, meaning all these sides are non zero rational numbers and the area is uh, d, then you can see that. We substitute that by c by 2 square, then x plus minus d, both are squares. In other words, if I take the product of x, x plus d, and x minus d, we get a square, a rational square. So if we substitute, we get a point on this elliptic curve, y square equal to x cube minus d square x. And conversely, if we have a point on this elliptic curve with y coordinate non zero, then we can construct a rational right triangle. So, in other words, whether D is congruent or not, it boils down to the question whether there is a point on the elliptic curve with Y coordinate non zero. So, this is what I'm just uh, writing that whether D is a congruent number or not, it boils down to this question. And we refer to this uh, curve as the congruent number elliptic. Okay. And uh, if the y coordinate of a point is non zero, then this point has infinite order. In other words, uh, we can say that the elliptic curve has positive rank if and only d is congruent. So, whether d is congruent or not, it is equivalent to uh, having the rank of this elliptic curve be positive. On the other hand, well, I mean, of course, this uh, algebraic rank is very hard to compute. There is no algorithm for this. On the other hand, there is an analytic rank that one can associate with the elliptic curve, and it is nothing but the order of vanishing of the SMA L function of the elliptic curve at s equal to one. And uh, famous PhD conjecture predicts that we all know that this uh, analytic rank should be equal to. Uh, algebraic rank and it uh, may be noted that when this conjecture was framed, it was not even known whether this L function is well defined at S equal to 1. It was only after work of wise that we talk about, we can actually talk about the value at S equal to 1. And so, by this conjecture, what you can see is that because this analytic rank is somewhat easier to handle compared to the algebraic rank. In particular, the L function satisfies a functional equation relating its value at S and two minus S. So if that uh, is a functional equation, and if that sign of that functional equation is uh, minus one, or if this uh, it is odd, then we can say that uh, and, uh, the L function vanishes at S to one. Okay, so, and it is work of Barch and Stephens in 1966 that if we have an integer of the form 8k plus 5, 8k plus 6, or 8k plus 7, then the analytic rank must be odd. So, in particular, the BSD conjecture would predict that any numbers, any integer, any positive integer congruent to 5, 6, or 7 would be congruent. But it is more difficult to predict what happens when integer is of the form 1, 2, or 3, or 3. Because then this uh, analytic rank, the parity of the analytic rank is even. So it may have a zero of order 0 also, because 0 is nothing. Can have order 2, 
I mean, we would have uh, preferred rank two, but it could be zero as well. So that's why it's uh, even if we assume PSD conjecture, uh, we'll not be able to predict from the value of the L function whether such numbers will be concrete. Yes, yeah. So that applies to this case. I mean, this is the special case. Uh, Bart and Stephens already took in 96, but due to uh, Tom Sixer and other uh, people, there are a lot of work on the uh, parity that they have the same parity. But I think they related to the Selmar parity. The Selmar parity and analytic parity, they, they have the same parity. Assumes finiteness of shard to get the parity. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention that as well because that is going to be a part of our assumption also. Uh, yeah, so in these cases, it is difficult to know whether uh, just by looking at concrete scoring the way, whether these numbers are concrete or not. It is not so these, these are the cases which are more interesting in some sense compared to 5, 6, or 7, or 8. Okay. And uh, so of course, the torsion part is very easy to determine. By Mother's theorem, of course, we have only 15 possibilities. But in this particular case, for the concrete number elliptic curve, it is even simpler to calculate the torsion part. It is a z mod 2z plus z mod 2z. Okay. So, because of the difficulty of calculating the rank, model will rank of this elliptic curve, uh, we Look at Selmer groups. In our case, we'll be looking at two Selmer groups. So it consists of uh, cohomology classes uh, in the first cohomology group. Uh, so there's a, it's a subgroup of uh, the cohomology, first yellow cohomology group, and we will start with local conditions. And what we get is an exact sequence that we have a model group. Pushing with pi twice the model will group it injects into the two cell group, and we have the two part of the Shapiroff state. Okay, and we can see from uh, this uh, exact sequence itself the significance of the Selman group. In some sense, it controls the model will group as well as the Shapiroff state group sitting in the middle of this exact sequence. And uh, it is customary. So I'm following the notation of Hill Brown, who had uh, two significant papers on size of Selman groups in 1993 and 1994 uh, in uh, invention. Yes. So, and he, uh, rather than, uh, I mean, he counted the number of points in the Selman group as 2 to the power 2 plus SP. Reason being that uh, the contribution of 2 in the exponent it comes from the torsion part. So, uh, so it's a, so to speak, it is the contribution of the rank part is uh, S3. So, and we can see from the exact sequence that this uh, is the first. Uh, so we can see from this, okay. So we can see that uh, this uh, rank is bounded by the Selmer, Selmer rank, two Selmer rank. And what we'll be doing is basically in our case, will be considering the with small prime factors, I mean, small number of prime factors. So then we have a good control over the Selmer rank. And, but we have to, oh, we have to assume something on the Shapiroff state group. I, I should mention that, as we all know, that this uh, Shapiroff state group is conjecturally finite. And it's a part of the BSD conjecture. And it's still, of course, not proof. Of course, we in our case we just need the finiteness of the two torsion part. So as long as we have that this Shapiroff state group two, uh, two torsion part is finite, we'll be able to say that R D and S D have the same parity. And since in our case we soon see that as these two and D is D will assume to be congruent, so we can say that R D is two. So rather than working with R D equal to one, which is anyway guaranteed by D being congruent, will actually need our argument will require this rank to be and it will come from this parity, consideration of parity. 
provided the separate state group is two part of separate state group is final. Okay, but uh, let us first mention uh, some work which related a congruent number and a class number of uh, quadratic fields. Okay, which was first. Uh, uh, like this, uh, so if it was first, also, uh, they are in tunnels. Uh, seminal paper in invention is, of course, very good. Path code. He gave a criteria for n to be congruent in terms of how many ways n can, n can be expressed in terms of two quadratic forms. Okay. And is uh, uh, what he considered was a uh, like modular form of weight three by two for gamma naught of one twenty eight. And the L function of the elliptic curve to be expressed in terms of some coefficient of that uh, uh, arbitrary modular wave form. Okay. So, in one direction, uh, if we have that this Fourier coefficient is non zero, we can get E to be non congruent. That is because, the theorem, because of the theorem of Oates and Wiles. Because Oates and Wiles have a theorem that if an elliptic curve has complex multiplication, then if the algebraic rank is positive, then L function is zero. In other words, if L function is non zero, in this case, it is same thing as Fourier coefficient being non zero, then, uh, then they, uh, by the proven part of the PhD conjecture by Coates and Wiles, I can say that he is not common. So, but anyway, so uh, this is the uh, result there to mention that if we take a prime congruent to one more h, then if p is congruent, so h minus p is divisible by a. Or we can view it this way also, since class group computation is probably easier, so we can say that if a does not divide the class number of q actually is square of minus p, then p is not congruent. And similar work was done by Kazali in 2013, and his statement is somewhat stronger, but he assumes the PSD condition. And in his case, it's an if and only condition that if a prime is uh, 1 mod 16, then 16 divides a class number if and only either P is congruent or 8 mod HZ, I mean, 10 mod HZ square is contained in the separate state. And he has similar result for p congruent to 9 mod 16. So, what do we do? Because these are uh, the cases where he had only one factor. So, we'll try to, in this talk, we'll present some form when he has two prime factors. And like, but okay, I, sh I should have mentioned first of all that this I'm presenting joint work with uh, Dr. Shabik Des, the former PhD student of mine, who is now a postdoctoral fellow at HRI. And so it is still now trying to work with more primes. If we increase the number of primes, so it's working on that. But uh, in this present, what we do when we have two primes. So the statement of our result is like this: that uh, if we have e as a product of two primes, both congruent to five more a, and we have q as quadratic residue of p. And we assume that the separate state group, the two part is not that much. Different. We'll soon see that this is not a very strong assumption in some sense. It's expected to be true. I mean, because of the conjecture of this, which are expected to be true. Then we can see that H, we can prove that class number of HD will be divisible by four, and class number of the imaginary quadratic field U and so X squared of minus three will be compared to eight mod sixteen. And we can prove something similar when uh, uh, we can prove something similar when u is not a quantity residue of p. But that time we need an additional assumption on expression of q in terms of a quadratic form involving p or involving p. So I'll come to these assumptions in the next slide. Okay. So as I said, it's assumption that the separate state group. Okay, I should have written the two part. If the two part of the separate state group is not Z one to Z, it follows if we assume that uh, 
uh, it is finite. If the two part is finite, it can never be by work of vertex sequence. And so this assumption will ensure that this rank of the congruent number elliptic curve is the once we show that the Selma rank is because of the index sequence. And we also have an additional assumption about expressing U in terms of a binary quadratic form involving P. Why do we need that? Because we are using some work of Brown. Uh, and he had that assumption, so we could not get around that. But we could verify numerically. I mean, Brown also noted that this condition should be often satisfied. And in uh, we checked cases up to PQ less than 50,000. And we saw that possibly one exception is there for P equal to 1 in <laughs> 3 and P equal to 1 in 1. Because I mean, we look for solutions of U and P up to 15 million. It may exist, we, we may have some solution beyond that, but uh, we could only stick to this range of values of even, and we could not find for this particular case the first 50,000, I mean, primes uh, less than 50,000. Of course, it's an interesting question why this should hold, or how often this should hold, or what should be the density of primes, etc. This kind of questions are there, but of course, we, 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 are, we are unable to answer that then. And this is just to illustrate. I want to uh, show you a table that when we have D to be a concrete number, a class number of the imaginary quadratic field, you can see that it is A cos 16. And for the real quadratic field, we are finding that it is divisible by so as predicted by our uh, result. <laughs> and uh, uh, also, Maybe it is uh, more useful in the other direction because if we know something about the class group, for example, if the imaginary quadratic field has class number divisible by 16, meaning it is not 8 more 16, then we can say that this 305 is not congruent. And we can verify, of course, by type 1. And similarly, not just in the quadratic residue case, but in the non residue case also, we can check that. When the imaginary quadratic field class number is not 8 mod 16, then the number is not constant. And of course, we must mention that these conditions are only necessary conditions. So if these congruent, then we expect the class numbers to have this kind of property mod 8, but almost 16. But we the converse is not true. For example, D is such a number 2 by 4 by. It is not congruent, even though the class numbers have the desired uh, properties. It only works only in one direction. How much time I have with you? Between 20 minutes. 25 minutes. Yeah, I don't need that one. Right? <laughs> okay. So what do we do? What is uh, I'll just give a brief sketch of the group because uh, what so the rank of the Selma rank or the Selma rank can be calculated uh, considering the system of geometric equations, which are essentially can be considered as homogeneous spaces for the elliptic curve. But let's not go into those details. And this is beautifully explained in the paper by E. Proud. In fact, Monsky had an appendix in the uh, second paper where he shows that the RD and SD can be calculated by looking at these geometrical equations or divisors of D. So, like if we have N as the number of pairs of divisors A and B of D. For which the system has non trivial integral solutions, then that RD is given by the power RD is N. And uh, for the Selma rank, it is where we have everywhere local solutions. So, in the 
Selma, uh, how do we calculate SD for the two Selma rank? That we look at uh, for how many pairs of divisors of D we have non trivial local solutions everywhere. Okay. So, if these solutions do not have a global solution, they will go to the separate state. Their context, like they, they, their contribution is coming from the separate state. So, uh, so, we are using that using these geomental equations. And first of all, we calculate ST, so this two Selma rank. And there is, as I mentioned, this article of Monsky, the appendix of Ed Brown's paper in 1904. He uses the termination of two Selma rank to competition of, to, uh, okay, a block matrix of it. I should not probably say two by two block matrix. And whose entries are Leander symbols, which is respect to minus one and two, and prime factors of E. So this is, uh, uh, yes, uh, and this rank is easy to calculate when we have few primes of E. So e has just a few uh, number of primes to calculate. And we can easily calculate it to be two. So the Selma rank is two, and under assumption of the supremacy state group. Or we can say finite this of the two part of the separate state group. We can say that Rd is actually two because D is congruent. So Rd has to be positive. And since it, since it is bounded by two, there are only two choices, one or two. And now by finite this of the separate state group, uh, two part of the separate state group. Or in fact, we need a weaker assumption that if the two part of the separate state group is not Z not to Z, then we have RD to do. Okay. So what we can do with this, if we know that RD equal to 2, <coughs> okay. Okay. So this is just I'm just introducing a simple what is a quart, the quartic residual symbol. And why am I introducing this? Because uh, we'll, it will be needed in the criteria of Brown and Kaplan on class groups. That's why at this point I need to introduce squartic residue symbols. And for a prime congruent to one more four, if we know that the multiplicative group of ZL and uh, ZL, it has like uh, uh, four divisive order. So certain elements of the fourth power. And if it's a fourth power model, then we we'll say it's a, uh, this symbol is one. So we need this uh, definition for this result of Brown. In transactions in 1974, where he expressed the class number of these such quantitative fields in precisely the cases that we want, that is, he had a formula in terms of quantity residue symbol. And what we try to do is we want to obtain these quantity residue symbols from the geometric equations that uh, we have mentioned earlier. So, basically, we rely on these results. And for imaginary quantitative field, there is a, a work by Kaplan that we use. Again, this is also involving quartic residue symbol. In fact, we need the same condition on the quartic residue symbol. That it is, it should be one. Take a product of quartic residue symbols, Q with respect to Q and Q with respect to P, it should be one. And which we will show using the geometric. Uh, Okay. And that's where we need the rank to be two because if we know that rank is two, then it ensures that we have a solution for the pair E comma P because uh, they are like several conditions. I mean, like uh, this A and B could be one P, Q, P, Q, etc. Or similarly, Q could have been also there are like 16 choices, but because of this uh, legal simple condition or convex condition, modulo A. You can discard easily some of these solutions, but we are left with four. Whether uh, actually we have preferred one, but uh, I mean we have preferred two, but we have four, and that's where uh, we need the assumption of the separate state. Because separate state group ensures that whatever four pairs are left for each pair, we are getting a non-trivial solution for this geometric uh, equations. So if we do that. And then uh, we do some, uh, like, uh, we can work with those geopetal equations and uh, we can 
obtain the quantity residual symbols in the results of Brown and Kapla. So that's how we work in the uh, and similarly for uh, it's almost similar when the quantity non residue if P and Q is like P is a non residue on Q then we have to work with an additional assumption and again this time we have to work with a different pair that it is P comma Q and but it is guaranteed that we have a solution for P comma Q as well because the rank is two. So we have two super solutions here. So four solutions are there. And after ruling out some of the possibilities of those 16 pairs, we are left with four <coughs> pairs. And for each one, we have solutions. So that is the idea of the proof. And this is like uh, a table just to show that we, we have verified it for a some good. Okay, and uh, another uh, result that I would like to mention here is that if H2P is not divisible by 4, then P is a non quadruple number. So it is almost similar. This time P is 2P. And we just have to observe that since minus 2 is a quadratic uh, residue of P, so P splits in this field, imaginary quadratic field. And since the class number of this quadratic field is one, so we can write P as CP square plus two DP square. So actually, these are all like comes from the congruence conditions and all. And Brown again proved in his transactions paper that H2P is congruent to DP mod four. So basically, he works with the definition probably of the K no no talk table that the class number. Uh, the class group, I mean, the class number of uh, quadratic fields can be related to the inequivalent binary quadratic forms uh, of discriminant D. Either it is equal or it is uh, one by two of the, uh, uh, the number of equivalent classes of quadratic. So, using that kind of argument, we have obtained these results. And we just simply uh, exploit these uh, geometric equations and Show that EP is compared to zero point. That's all that is. Okay. And this time we don't need any adaptation of the separate state group because whatever solutions are left, each one will give us the solution. Our desired property. The EP is compared to zero point four. We can show it by working with any of these pairs. We don't need any adaptation of separate state. And Okay, of course, uh, we can check that these are all the, uh, and uh, for example, maybe the interesting direction is if H2P is not divisible by 4, for example, prime 17, 73, or 89, then we can check that P should not be congruent, which our results are also private. So, there, yeah, by looking at divisibility condition on the class number, we can see whether uh, P is congruent or whether D is not congruent. So, finally, uh, I just want to mention because it's already uh, there are certain classical results concerning which numbers are congruent and which are non congruent. And but it essentially depends on the form of the prime factors. In this uh, following statements, what do we do? That we take a prime pi where pi is congruent to i mod h. So this is a very classical result of Nagel that p3 is not congruent. And the ignar is a very significant word. And its significance was realized much later that uh, its construction of a polynomial infinite order actually works in a much more general situation. But he showed that if we take twice the prime, which is congruent to three mod a, then it will be three is congruent. For example, six is congruent. And of course, Monsky extended this method for more factors because if we observe that he has only one or two prime factors. Okay. And Monsky generalized it. Uh, some of these cases have three prime factors in the discriminant. But yeah. of course, recently, Jian, uh, uh, like he showed that he constructed congruent numbers with arbitrarily large number of prime factors. Okay. So, so, and in this regard, what we can say with our method is that if a prime number is of the form 16k plus 9, then 2b is not a congruent number in the spread of these uh, previous uh, results. That's it. Uh, we can say about the form of non congruent numbers. And how do we do? Again, it's the same kind of argument. We 
uh, look at the uh, like we know that p can be written since it is one more four it is sum of two squares and since it is one more day then bp is divisible by four and it is enough to show that ap is one more day which you can do considering this by uh, this uh, uh equations in fact initially we related we took this result in a complicated way relating it to class number of uh, minus 2p and minus I mean, square, q adjoint square of minus 2p and q adjoint square of minus p and if your class number is a up to a factor which is divisible by a then p has to be one more 16 that kind of result is there but actually it is not needed so you can just directly say this although that probably excuse it from a conference on class uh, class so, so that's all I have to say. So, um, yeah, so these are the some of the references that uh, we have used in the participants in the variety of the rank of computation. So, they do in particular the complex number empty curve and also at y square equal to x plus k. And then, of course, this uh, Brown's result on L and imaginary quantitative fields. And in Brown's approach to summer rank that we have to wait. And of course, Mons case. Approach to calculation of two cellular rank and for the imaginary quadratic field. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much.